data and data ownership, uh, where data gets produced, and I mean, and also not wanting to lose sight of, wow, there's really amazing things that we can do with data now, right? Like the data that's being collected from the hardware devices and various things at this conference is amazing, yeah. right? And we want to utilize that to the best possible way. And so the Human Data Commons Foundation is comes out of this. There's amazing ways that we can combine and use data. There's very destructive ways that data can be used. Uh, there's all sorts of privacy and ethical concerns. This is a, a very, um, you know, this is a burgeoning field, an active discussion that's happening now. I'm super thrilled to see it happening. You know, I've just heard, overheard, you know, so many conversations here about data and privacy and where is it stored and all this kind of stuff, which is just music to my ears. And, um, and so playing some sort of coordinating role in how that can happen so that we get the best possible results and eliminate the worst possible results is the purpose of the Human Data Commons Foundation. Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are at the Transformative Technology Conference. We love being here. There's so many brilliant people here. Shout out to our main woman, Nicole Bradford. We love you so much. And we have the pleasure of now sitting down with Scott Nelson. What's up, man? <laughs> this is my first time at this conference. I um, sent down um, our executive director of our organization last year uh, to sort of recon it, and she connected with Nicole, and uh, Nicole connected with her, obviously, and uh, they were like, yeah, you guys got to get involved this time. So I'm on a panel tomorrow to talk about data sovereignty, privacy, and, and sort of user rights. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. <laughs> and it, what you were just teaching me a moment ago, we'll be unpacking that. I'm super excited. Huge thank you for coming out oh, on the show. Yeah, we really appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, all right, so uh, Human Data Commons, really cool foundation. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about uh, the conference. We'll talk mm -hmm. about the Quantified Self Report card. It's all very interesting stuff. I'm super excited for that. Um, let's let's get to know more about you. So, sure. um, who the hell are you? How did you even end up where you're at today? <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, what's our total time here? <laughs> you, you take as much time as you want. Okay, uh, well, who the hell am I? Um, well, um, I've always been a computer geek. Uh, Apple II Plus, yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I did my undergrad, uh, undergrad work in philosophy, philosophy of mind and philosophy of science and how they meet um, or where they meet. Um, and then um, and started one of the first web development companies in Canada, probably the first one actually in, in 93. Um, and it was focused all around actually ecological sustainability was our focus. I wanted to bring that technology and help that those sorts of initiatives get out in front with, with the new medium. So I had that through the 90s, uh, sold out of that, that company, um, and then I became a solo agent uh, for the next uh, few years, got really inspired by the open source movement, mm -hmm. and became what I called a, a uh, technology steward, helping progressive organizations, again, working around sustainable and ecological and environmental issues to uh, adopt open source technology and, and uh, make make a shift to that technology for what they were doing and try and empower them in that way. And then I got um, got involved in Bitcoin in 2010, early uh, user there. That touched a bunch of things for me around privacy, economics, um, mm -hmm. technology, cryptography, uh, all interests of mine, open source. Um, and I kind of jumped whole hog into, into what was going on there. And so I... Um, I invested a lot of time and my skills, my tech skills are pretty good um, around building infrastructure around that. And of course, you know, moved the dial a few years and you know, I have certainly a very different relationship to capital than I did back in those days. So in that intervening time, I've done a lot to sort of promote the um, digital currency and blockchain ecosystem. Um, 
and looked for ways. And also, I mean, the other sort of big thing for me is about 12 years ago, I guess, I had like a psycho-spiritual crisis in my own life, I really opened up to uh, meditation. Uh, that's when I learned about uh, the integral model and the work of Ken Wilber, American philosopher Ken Wilber, mm -hmm. greatly impressed mm -hmm. by that, that model. And so, you know, where I'm at now is, and why I'm at this conference, is it brings together so many elements. Yes. Um, and, you know, I think uh, we all have a sense of, you know, there's some big problems that need to be tackled. Uh, there's a feeling that, you know, you know, it's probably better to be moving quickly on addressing some of these issues rather than dragging our heels. <laughs> um, uh, Raising human consciousness and uh, everything around that is, uh, I mean, certainly for me, an important part of the solution. Um, probably, you know, the most expedient solution. So how we get there, um, and so I kind of approach that on a on a number of different fronts. Um, but you know, the Human Data Commons Foundation is specifically to look at data and issues around data. Um, and I get how you got to where you <laughs> are now. It, it now makes it's sense. making sense. It pieces together. Yeah, it's very There's multidisciplinary. Some weird way. <laughs> you know, you, yeah. you 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 picked you picked a lot of things that resonate with you know the Integral Three along with the open sourcing and the economics of things like Bitcoin and the freedom that comes with things like yep. that. And yeah. it just all kind of you know crunches together to to make what you care about now. It's cool. Yeah. I like it when it puzzled kind of seems like it's biased a little bit because I want it to make sense. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And you know, we are uh, we are pattern recognition creatures, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when when we can see a coherent pair, um, uh, you know, a coherent pattern emerging and I mean we're also humans, so that means not everything we do makes sense with <laughs> by any yep. means. And you know, um, Part of the uh, part of the impetus, I guess, or why I think this is so important, is I really share the sensibilities of Yuval Noah Harari around yeah, data, likewise. around uh, the ability for it to be used to manipulate us, and how you know yeah. we really have to look it seriously. Is. It, it already totally is. is. It totally is. And it's not just people. People act like it's ten years old with <laughs> with Facebook and Twitter and stuff. Yeah, no, yeah. this is. Even before that, with the era of the um, uh, Bernays and, and the and this, uh, what, what was it again? S s um, s s psychotherapy? No, no, it's um, oh yeah, a Freudian, Fro Freudian, psych Freudian yeah. psycho psychoanalysis, psychoanalysis, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, and then there's even before that is with the. Um, uh, like the, f the the food era and the, the foods and, and yeah, yeah. there's there's been manipulations even for the Trojan <laughs> horse letting in the Trojan horse, you know these things have been happening for, yeah, for yeah. since we started. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, thank you for bringing that up because I actually skipped over that part of the story, and that oh, is. Glad we are here. <laughs> But w yeah. When I got out of the ivory tower of philosophy in Vancouver, where, where I studied it, my first job was actually at the world's largest public relations um, firm. And I had no idea what public relations firm, I had no idea about business, about you know the media, any of that stuff. And I land in this office and we're, you know, a, you know gigantic multinational corporation, this is in like 92, and I'm like, I, what is this work we're doing? We're like monitoring the media and we're like, you know, setting up these press conferences and these, you know, public, you know, things and lobbying government and stuff. And finally, a friend of mine there who kind of recognized my ethics, I was already, you know, you know, a tree hugger. I was like already a Greenpeace supporter and stuff. So, you know, this was all like kind of really hard for me to figure out. And he's like, here, this will help. And he slides a copy of Chomsky's manufacturing consent to me. <laughs> and I took it home and I was like, holy shit, yeah, yeah. holy shit, that's what I'm doing. That's what's going on. And, you know, it was a very, um, yeah, it was a huge awakening for me about, oh, this is, you know, a really serious part of how the world works is to look at the masses as manipulable and, you know, and that their 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 behavior can be molded and sculpted and and forced and so, and and it was 
my experience in that that made me want to start my own company actually which I did in 93 when the web was just emerging so you know that hit all of my computer geek stuff but now I had this other understanding of sort of manipulating the world and quite frankly at least initially I was like oh I, cool I have a cool new tool in my you know in my toolbox that I can leverage for the kinds of changes that I think need need to happen so I always anyways, like thank it you for that. I always <laughs> like it when entrepreneurs <laughs> say things like the normal model of the world that I lived in was not good enough. <laughs> I wanted to go and change it and make it better. And so uh, another thing that, that you said that resonated with me, it was about how you, had ch you chose to, to observe how, how, how strange it was when people feel like they are superior to other people and they get all egotistical about it and they go and they try and make manipulations in culture and in economics and policy for their favor. And then there's this other sort of mentality of, of, of feeling equality and divinity to other people. Mm. And that like equality and divinity and feeling that and knowing that you were actually talking about this before we started, but when you baseline someone away from anger and fear and you baseline them towards a neutral state mm. in a calm state, a quantum state, mm. that they can get rebaselined to a state of happiness and bliss. Right, and yeah. That, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I, I, I was really vibing on the juxtaposition between those two things <laughs> as you were speaking, so I wanted to mention it. <laughs> yeah, it thank good. you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and, I, and uh, I mean, you're alluding there, I think, to the, what we're talking about, about theory you, taking people into a place of stillness, yeah. right? And then right action will emerge out of that, yeah, yeah as, as being part of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's a, that's a very important part of sort of our process and what we try and do as well. So you're in the ivory tower. And I mean, well, <laughs> I was in the ivory tower, you know, in, in back in 90, and back in, yeah, 90, yeah. 91, and yeah. then boom, into the belly of the beast in this international public relations uh, firm, and then, then started my, my first company after that. And I mean, part of the reason that I started a company is because I had fam familiarity with, you know, the various structures, or forms out there that one could sort of effect change with. Um, and you know, I've probably spent, I've always kind of skirted that line between nonprofits and, and businesses and stuff. Um, you know, it's 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 much more highly developed now in terms of the whole notion of social enterprise and things like this you hear of. Um, but back then, and still, I mean, for for well, yeah, certainly back then. Um, you kind of had to make a choice which one you were going to do kind of thing. And um, it was pretty clear that the corporate form is the one that has the most freedom to do whatever it wants in the world. As soon as you're in other structures, you're beholden to much larger populations or you know, the government in certain ways for you know, your 503C charitable tax status and, and things like that. And so you know, choosing the entrepreneurial route was, um, was in part a, um, you know, there was a certain element of freedom to do what I wanted kind of thing. To yeah. That. yeah, yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> Again, you, you, knew, you knew, this is a very classic entrepreneurial pull of, of wanting freedom to build the future and, and, and wanting to change the war, way the world works as they're not satisfied with the way it works. So, all right, so now take us to the first company, take us to what you're building, take us to how that brought you to Human Data Commons, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, the first, the first company, as I mentioned, was um, about bringing web technology to the sustainability movement, let's just call it that. Uh, that included, you know, corporate, government, and nonprofit clients, so we kind of bridged, bridged that world. And doing web dev for sustainability related projects. Yeah, yeah, cool. that's right. Cool. Um, and uh, again, it was kind of the first, I think it probably was the first yeah. web development shop in, yeah, in, in Canada. Yeah, in 93, that's very, yeah, so yeah, that's, that's it was, it was It was early, and we, in fact, we, we were also uh, mm -hmm. doing that with other computer networks that are around, were around at that time. Uh, I don't know if you were into the BBS scene or there was yeah. also an international kind of... Um, I was born then. Oh, you were? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew dropping that one on you would be like, you're like I don't know if you were into the BBS scene. I was like, I was born then, yeah. Okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah. We'll move right along. Yeah. <laughs> 
that's fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic because you know I wasn't I didn't I didn't get to be there in the yeah. '90s when you yeah, guys were yeah. building the first web well, dev company. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. so you've been immersed in it your whole life, yeah, right? Yeah. You've never known life without without tech. Without tech, yeah. You know, without that tech, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I. I can't really imagine. I don't have children myself, um, and I don't have a lot of sort of younger-ish people in my life. May um, I ask you why the choice for the cho no children? Yeah, I mean, again, it was tied largely to uh, e e ecology. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, Mo I mean, most, pe most people don't get, aren't following the whole like selfish gene thing. They're not they're not really understanding that like making a copy of themselves into the world so is so unnecessary. <laughs> it's you know so for some people they feel like it's it, it brings them the most meaning yeah. in their life is to do something like yeah. that. And yeah. and for yeah. and for me I say this frequently is that I just I like to challenge status quo a lot. And an interesting way to challenge the status quo would be like maybe medics. And, and, and disseminating ideas to billions of people is actually way more impactful and important for me to do mm -hmm. than to pop out one or two kids and yeah, then focus yeah. all my time on those kids. Yeah. So anyway, that's kind of like my little tiny yeah, like yeah, bit perspective. Yeah. I mean, I have to admit, I was fortunate that my partner never wanted to have kids, so that made it and a lot. And you're still with your partner? Yeah, yeah. Oh, she's yeah. here, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that is, yeah, you're very fortunate that, yeah, yeah she didn't want to, yeah, because then yeah. now you're both focusing on your... Yeah, yeah, and she us, felt right? actually stronger about it than I did, so Whoa. that made it easier for me, that so that's, it's great, yeah, it's unusual for it's sure. good to have stories like this, because most... Uh, women are getting categorized into buckets of like, oh, like wanting to have families and wanting to nurture kids and yeah, wanting to. Yeah. There's plenty of women that, that yeah. are like, no, I don't want to have kids. Apparently, uh, it's one in five. That's one in I've heard. five. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> I recently heard one out of every five uh, dollars in the United States is spent on healthcare. <laughs> Another interesting statistic. Another interesting statistic. <laughs> yeah. Wow. One in five yeah. women don't. Yeah. Have kids. That, that's that's, that's what I've heard from so, from, from a friend of mine who's researched. It. Yeah. But you know, I mean, for Just me personally, it's also the case that I think you know, in terms of perpetuating my genes, well, that's not necessary. I can do whatever I want with my DNA, and I can sell it to who I want, and all of that kind of stuff. That's part of the age that we live in now, mm -hmm. so that is no longer any mm -hmm. sort of argument. Mm -hmm. And the other thing for me, too, was... <gasps> Wait a second. You're saying that you're, the age we live in is, you're, it's already, now we got to a point where you can just sell your sperm to people that need sperm, that want sperm, and yeah, and you can, your genes can live in a way where you don't even have to uh, nurture the child, and somebody else wants to raise a child that isn't able to find the sperm. And yeah, and I, I, I'm not at all making the claim that yeah. my DNA is somehow special, S special or something that. like but that. But you live in the age where the genes can spread without you needing to have exactly. a kid. Exactly. That's very interesting. Exactly. Yeah. Just that, that that point was yeah. really cool. Yeah. Okay, continue. Yeah. Yes. The other point, which I which I think is valid as well, is that if I decided I felt that I must be a father to some figure, there's so many other opportunities to do that that don't require, again, me bringing another human into the world. I can adopt a child, I can be a foster father, or there's mm -hmm. all these mm -hmm. other structures in a, that would allow me to do that in a meaningful way that doesn't require, you know, oh, we need more humans on the planet. There's, there's a, there's a, there's definitely a difference in the bonding hormone for when you procreate versus when it is an adoption. And I, I yeah, would I would yeah. like to know exactly what the difference in the bonding hormone, like of an oxytocin, would right, be. Right. Um, but then uh, you also mentioned ecological footprint, which I yeah, thought is yeah. very interesting. Yeah. It looks like population is going to stabilize around nine. 10 billion people, it looks like that. And if- Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, <laughs> fingers crossed, we can handle that. Yeah. And uh, there's, there's, a sig there's significant <clears throat> impact when people choose to not have kids. That's like not using whatever egregious amount of diapers, whatever uh, <laughs> egregious amount of yeah, electricity yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not currently Again, it's not currently yeah. com completely sustainable by solar or something or uh, right, fusion. Right. So, 
So yeah, it's a, it's a lot of resources that need to be used. Plastic bottles. Oh. So, of course, some would say I've more than made up for it by getting involved with Bitcoin, but <laughs> which is pretty valid. <laughs> okay, let's direct us let's direct us back to the human data commons yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, let's <laughs> go back there. That was good. That was that was a good tangent. Though. I like that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, back to the human data commons. Yes. So yeah, okay. So my company, open yes. source steward. And then blockchain, getting into blockchain, or Bitcoin. Um, so, um, yeah, and then, you know, the um, psycho-spiritual crisis of 12 or so years ago, and the, you know. What was that like for you? What was that feeling well, like? Well, I mean, crisis, I think, is yeah. an important part of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in terms yeah. of what it feels like. Uh, definitely feels like having the rug pulled out from under you in like a whole bunch of different ways. think you're doing things in a way that's meaningful and then you get opened up to something that makes you think that you want to do it a different way? Um, um, I would place it more in the category of existential crisis as in why am I here? What am I doing? Yeah. Um, um, and also, you know, I'm um, I'd be tied into sort of my my interest and understanding of integral theory is yeah. the idea that we go through a series of crises in our lives yeah. as we kind of level up. Is Each, it like every seven years? Is that what it is? Well, Somewhere? it's it doesn't tie to a strict schedule not like strict, that. Not totally strict, yeah, but somewhat yeah. around somewhat, somewhat like that. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. You know, right I from birth. Totally and then, am a completely different person than oh. I was in high school. Of course, um, yeah, yeah. Because you're evolving I wouldn't have for one thing, and you believe in development, and you're, yeah, you're yeah. into all of this stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. So Isn't it weird when you look back and you're like, <laughs> I would not have been my own friend. That's so weird <laughs> to look at that. And I have to ask, how long ago was that for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm 26 now. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, so yeah, now yeah. it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you've got I you've I got a cushion it. there. Did you it have really did you weird. just have your ten year reunion or? Uh, I n n uh, no no it will be I guess in a year or two will okay. be the ten year okay. reunion of high school. Yeah yeah um, yeah. Is that a thing for you? I mean it, I went to my it, ten year. So, yeah yeah I yeah. It was but really isn't weird, it strange? Actually. It already is. It's already strange <laughs> even thinking about this. I got friends that are still like working the job that they worked at when I knew them in high in school. High school. Yeah. I'm like really. Yeah. <laughs> But it's a good union job. <laughs> or what, whatever the algorithm is that keeps looping, uh, what, where, where is the insatiable appetite for growth and learning and curiosity? And mm. just, yeah. Anyway. Well, um, to some extent, that's a, that's a privileged position to be in as well, right? To be able to pursue those kinds of things. Well, we also right? see like, artists um, or entrepreneurs uh, that choose to uh, throw a, away all of the privilege of, of, of being like, oh, yeah. I'll just do no, the normal path, which is right. privileged in a sense, because yeah. when you go down the, uh, the beat, uh, the less walked path, you end up living way lower in socioeconomic status, yeah. um, but you find more meaning in your life, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. it does in, in some ways um, privilege you to have more time to yeah. contemplate and make and create. Yeah. So yeah. I, 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 we got to get past the scarcity. We got to. We're going to get towards abundance, yeah. where where people have time to contemplate their. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so for you, that back to that the the crisis. The, the crisis. crisis. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm kind of excuse me, folding it back into the integral model integral because model, yeah. you know, yeah. each time you move through a stage, a sort of an identified area where you've got a sort of a core set of of beliefs that are your orientation to the world, each time you move to a new level, part of what happens there is you, your old beliefs just aren't holding you anymore, right? Oh yeah. Right? And like you're saying, you know, with your, when you're looking back at yourself, the values you had in high school, right? It's like, yeah. Yeah. that's not me anymore. And, but at that time, those were the, the values that provided the meaning, provided the framework, you know, you were able to operate in the world with, right? But at some point, you outgrew those, right? Those no longer worked for you. They weren't you had to move me. to yeah. a new place, yes, right? Yes. That's a crisis every time. Uh, because the old values, you're still trying to hang on to them, you're still trying to make sense of the world with this value set, and yet it's not working, working anymore. anymore. And so there's a disjunct happening there. And in integral theory, 
there's certain transitions which are much harder. More things change. And one of them is the one that happens for all of us in adolescence. That's the first significant um, change that we go through. And that's why it's such a troubling time for us, yeah, right? Yeah. It's trying to figure out what's going on. And our new self is emerging. And our, you know, our old values, which kind of held us together in our early teens or whatever, we're, aren't working anymore. The world's a different place. You're inside of the hallways of the school and yeah. things are like so yeah. much different. Yeah. yeah. And then the other significant one, I would say, is often identified, especially for men, with a midlife crisis, right? And so that's and another way to think about it. women also have? I think so, but I think maybe in a different way or, or something. I, to be honest, I have not explored. So, oops. Uh, be a you're good. A knock. Yeah, um, you're good. Um, I've, I've not explored that side of things to any extent that I can sort of speak with any authority about that. Mm -hmm. But but I, but I am a believer that there are gender genuine gender differences like that's oh <laughs> I don't I don't uh, this is not a debate I don't know if we want to get this into is, that. this is not a debate well, whoever is propagating um, I'm sick of I'm sick of the alt right and I'm sick of the radical left I'm sick of yes. both of them Are you familiar with the intellectual dark web I am very familiar <laughs> oh, we, good. we host we 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 hosted we hosted Jordan Peterson on the oh, show good. <laughs> yeah, and that was he. He's one of he's one of my favorite yep. intellectuals, yep. and fantastic. Um, and Sam and Eric and yep. Brett are great. Joe is great. Yeah, and yep. um, I, and I, I, I here's here's something that I think it's great that we can vibe on this that that the the pursuit of truth, although it is uh, under attack in some sense by cognitive ease and tribalism and echo chambers, mm -hmm. although it is. Um, there is a, thank goodness, a somewhat of a footing in nuance, in multivariability, in equanimity, in just rebirthing the public intellectual. Mm. And that's, you know, mm -hmm. that's our tag with this mm. show. Is oh, wow, re fantastic. I didn't know that. The public intellectual. Yeah. I feel so honored. I'm like yeah, so yeah. into the, <laughs> the rebirth of the public yeah, intellectual. Yeah, we yeah. <laughs> yeah. see this vibe is yeah, really yeah. strong. Yeah, so like, well, it is. It's so, great. So, uh, okay, where, where were we pre- I don't know. I'm IDW. having so much fun. I'm forgetting I am, where I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I am too. Oh, and you were doing integral theory, the oh, yeah, adolescence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. The midlife crisis. Another sort of formulation. Well, no, I mean, I think the important thing for me is that, and I think the, the important thing for a lot of people, especially when they hit that second one, in integral theory, there's only a small percentage of the population that gets to that level, is at that level, and which it calls tier two. Roughly maximum kind of 2% of the population is there. And for a lot of those people, they're like, I'm done with society. I'm going off to be a hermit or a monk or write my thing, do art or whatever. That's part of the, that's part of the model. And a lot of people probably, most people, I would say, I think Terry O'Fallon would say, most people get up into that, and then it's so kind of overwhelming that it they is. slide back. It is. It's and extremely overwhelming. Yeah. Have you been yeah. to the 10 day meditation retreats of Apostle? Oh, yeah. yeah. You have? I'm a huge yeah. proponent of that. Yeah. Uh, good. In fact, I, that's my first, uh, some of my first philanthropic Bitcoin work was bounties for people who would complete that course for the first time. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's so good. Um, I just came back from my fourth one a couple yeah. days ago. Fantastic. And one goes there with the, oh, yes, no technology, no talking, <laughs> no eye contact. And, and, it's, um, and it's incredible. And it's like, it's so profoundly fascinating the way your creativity can be in by, its, by itself. And you train your mind yeah. and focus and everything. And then, you know, you consider you consider the monk, you consider the nun, you consider, yeah, yeah. yeah doing the complete silence and stuff. And you, you consider this radicalism mm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, it, it's interesting how many people consider and then how many people pull the trigger. I, I, just, want, I just wanted to say that. But <laughs> I just want to say that, yeah. So what, is, what does it mean to, you said 2% go to that level of 
yeah, of yeah. wanting to focus on their own. Yeah, and, and I mean, wh what we're talking about here are sort of um, stages of ego development is one way to think about mm -hmm. it, right? So get to that state and, and or get to that level and the part of the thing about being at that level is you're not so into social niceties, you're not so into... <laughs> I see some some nodding going some on. Some serious <laughs> nodding. Okay, I have to I have to say this. I, I recently started contemplating. I think it was over the meditation retreat. What if instead of with the first thirty thousand dollars, instead of buying a Tesla, you gave thirty artists each one thousand mm -hmm. dollars? How mm -hmm. would society drastically change by doing mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. that? Yeah. You plant these seeds <laughs> yeah. for trees whose shade you don't expect to sit in yeah. and yeah. what would happen. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just I'm so fascinated by that and I'm really excited to propagate a culture like that. Um, I love you, Elon, and you're w people can still have <laughs> Teslas, but m people also <laughs> need to you know, what is Yeah, what yeah, anyway, we've talked about conspicuous consumption a lot. Enough with the third yachts, the third mansions. Right, and I right. think N Nassim Nicholas um, Taleb wrote um, th like something about like there's nothing uh, more like eerie than the sound of an empty mansion on a Sunday <laughs> night, something like that. And I was like, ugh, ugh. Yes, this is something yes. like, ugh. It made me shiver a little on the inside. Yeah. Yeah, you sure. already feel that way in your one bedroom apartment when it's like but you're nearby yourself and you're like like there's no community and imagine being in that big of a place anyway <laughs> anyway yeah this we can we, we, we're vibing on interesting we're ways. vibing on it yeah, we're vibing yeah. on it what one of the one of the things though about that transition is that you become much more, let's say, intuitive is one, one word, much more in sort of tune with nature, in tune with what's going on with other people. You're getting s all sorts of signals and downloads from the cosmos that you're trying to make sense of. Um, and, you know, if you don't have a community around you who is there and has done that and has been there, then you know, it's pretty easy to think, wow, I'm like losing my mind. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> right? Because, yes, yes. and I mean, you know, if you're a seeker, like I think we both are, yeah. then at least you can probably hit the library and like take me to the mysticism section and help oh, yeah. me figure out what's going on here for me yeah. kind of thing, right? Yeah. And so you do that, right? And I mean, that takes you, to, that, you don't spend much time there before you end up on the path to meditation. <laughs> the link there is really, really clear and apparent. Yes. And then with any luck, and fortunately, you know, I've been extremely lucky as far as I can tell, um, you know, uh, really, I mean, um, you find a community that has been through this and has, is there and understands what's going on and has a model to account for it. And that, for me, is what the integral community combined with sort of classical Buddhism and, um, manages to do for me in my life. Um, Gotta have that community as well. Yeah yeah, 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 for sure. And then, you know, once, once you've um, grounded a bit, which takes a while, for me, do it took think, like two years. Do you think, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you think everybody goes through a no, not time everybody of goes. the intuitive? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, okay, you so have to get, talk. that's a fairly, l that's a fairly advanced, yeah, so let's, you know, that's fairly, uh, we don't want to say advanced or higher really. There's a lot of controversy around up. this. It's leveling it's up, leveling but it's up. also just, I think it's the, the, the phrase I prefer for it is like later stages of development. So definitely not everyone's going to get there. I'm sorry, Trump is never going to get there. Not in this lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Unless we can, you know, I don't know, do something like re really intervene on that guy. <laughs> so, so, so wait, this is, I'm, I'm such a logical person. Yeah. Um, I, I love math yeah. and I love probability and I love demographics. Mm. Um, so what would you say are the percentage of people that make it to late stage. Development. Yeah, late stage, um, and let's just let's just call it integral, 
Um, mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I think, I think the figures and really the authority here, I would say, are, is would probably be like Terry O'Fallon from Pacific Integral. She's mm -hmm. someone that I've that I've trained with, um, or probably Suzanne Cook Reuters. Although I, I'm less familiar with her work, but hers is very much around ego development and sort of tracking and understanding these 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 stages. Wilbur provided the sort of overarching framework. The other thing that he's done, which is really, really nice, if, if you haven't read any Wilbur, I really recommend, I think, uh, you know, I usually recommend uh, integral psychology mm -hmm. as a starting point for mm -hmm. that, because I think for any of us having a conversation like this, we're already interested in psychology, and mm -hmm. we've probably studied some psychology, mm -hmm. and what he does there is he really does a beautiful job, in my mind, in giving you an in easy to understand introduction to integral theory, which he's developed you know, in much greater extent in, in earlier books, and then showing how it applies to the field of psychology, in particular for addressing some of the kinds of m uh, you know, mental wellness and depression and anxiety and sort of classical treatments yeah. around that, showing how it relates to you know, Jungian psychotherapy yes. and, and to some extent Freud, um, although he's much more of a Jungian. And then, um, and then, but one of, the, one of the beautiful things that Wilbur does, which is really, I think, is really sort of one of his central gifts, is he then shows a sort of a cross-cultural spiritual development or psychological development uh, work that's come from other cultures. For example, the Hindus have a psychology, the Buddhists have a psychology, you know, these, these, these other cultures that have had a long time to examine this stuff. And they've also come to very similar kind of ideas around the structures and the fact that you can't become, you can't go straight to enlightenment as a meditator without going through reaching certain signposts or certain goals along the way, right? That's just the way it works. Yes. And so, you know, the, the, the levels build upon each other and the, the phrase that, uh, that he's captured is, we transcend and include when we move. So we don't reject what was there before us. Yeah, yeah. Our job is to bring that with us while we open up to a larger understanding of the cosmos and our relationships. It, it seems to me that the way that you're speaking about <clears throat> transcending and including is the, it could potentially be the next uh, the next evolution of human biology, that that is the next form of natural selection, mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. the ones that transcend and include, transcend and include and continue that sort of evolution mm -hmm. are, are the, is the next part of the evolution. Yeah. And then there's this kind of like this, this sense of fear that I, that I used to have when I used to speak a lot more about bifurcation of the species mm -hmm. into the mm -hmm. ultra wealthy and the ultra mm -hmm. poor mm -hmm. um, and, and <clears throat> especially with exponential technologies and whatnot. Yeah. And so that, that, that mentality, if, if people carry, if people still carry a, occasionally I'll just throw a little, uh, a little needle in the haystack and I'll say something along the lines of, well, maybe it goes against evolutionary pressure for me to give someone on the street $20. Mm. And that's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and it is. It's really fucked up, but yeah, it's um, yeah. but it's also <clears throat> it's a it's a it's it's altruism that will never be reciprocated, and that is something in evolutionary biology that typically does not work out for the fitness of the of, of the person that is attempting to mm -hmm. potentially. If you're trying to benevolently impact billions of people and give them sustainability and energy and education, and you're for some reason distracted by giving people on the streets 20 bucks or food or whatever, mm -hmm. that you may not attain a certain level of fitness with wanting, with what you can achieve with impacting the world because you're focused, it's kind of like the whole, you're having a kid instead of focusing on memetics and on some bigger picture stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's all this nuance to that conversation, but I like how you said transcend and include, transcend and include. Mm -hmm. That's very mm -hmm. interesting. And another one that I think you'd like is um, whenever, whenever I hear the superiority complex arise, um, even within myself still, I, um, I just start thinking colors. Colors on a color wheel. Mm -hmm. Colors on a color wheel. All colors 
Not mm. blue is better than pink, is better right, than green, right. is better than orange. Right. Just colors yeah. on a color wheel. And the wheel is very important, right? It's not a hierarchy. <laughs> a hierarchy, exactly. It's a fucking wheel. Yeah. It's a wheel, and the wheel even spins. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So you yep. can have whatever color you want facing up, <laughs> whatever yeah. color you want yeah. facing down. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Great. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is so interesting. Okay, so continue where you were at in, yeah. in, in integral theory and how that relates to, like, I really yeah, also want to yeah. make sure we talk about data. And yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Okay, and let, let's, so, so, so let's roll yeah, into yeah. after that, we'll yeah. roll into the conference and then the, yeah, yeah, and then the yeah. quantified self card, sure. four card. Great. Okay. Yeah, so, so I mean, just, just to sort of wrap up, I guess, a little bit about my psycho-spiritual crisis, um, allowing, allowing that to sort of lead me into finding a community and finding in particular this model with this understanding and this developmental theory was very helpful. And then I think, I th yeah, I don't know if this is human tendency or, I mean, I, I think, I think it probably is a human nature a bit that, you know, when we feel, uh, when we feel gratitude for something, we want to give back to that. And so I feel a fair bit of gratitude for that community and that, um, that model uh, for helping me understand what was going on for myself in a way that was not pathologizing. It was, you know, extremely liberating to, to do that. Um, and so it's like, oh, okay, well, there's something that I think others could benefit from, right? I mean, it's like, it's like Vipassana, right? Uh, when I came out of my first Vipassana, I was like, Everyone should do this. <laughs> I've modified that somewhat now. I think if you're at risk of psychosis, probably you shouldn't do it. <laughs> but pretty much everyone else should should do it. And uh, and that was the nature of my my bounty program was like spreading the word, like, hey, go do this, and you know. Um, so um, and and so looking at ways that it can give back, uh, believing in the sort of the veracity and the utility of the model, because the model, uh, one of the things that I find really um, wonderful about the model is it's both descriptive in that it describes the world and the way the world is and helps make sense of it, but it's also prescriptive, right? If you have this sort of this, this um, maturation that uh, we go through naturally, and it makes sense because you're moving towards more loving, more open, um, taking on additional perspectives in the decision making that you're doing, uh, you uh, getting to a place where you can flow um, with much more equanimity through situations and make decisions. I mean, why wouldn't we want everyone to be there doing that? <laughs> <laughs> and if there's and if if there's an understanding, oh, you're going to go through a series of crises, but oh, here's practices and things that will help you through these crises. So it's not such a crisis as it was for me. It's more of a, you know, a, a little hiccup or a little speed bump there, rather than oh my God, two years, you know, flailing around wondering what's going on. Um, then I mean, it just makes sense that that's what I should be doing with my time. Um, and so, um, and being a computer geek, having this understanding of, of uh, the world, um, you know, apps and their power and what can be done with them. I have to admit, I've watched this whole social media thing with quite a bit of concern. Um, I just deleted my Twitter account after 10 years, never been on Facebook. Um, you know, I've played around a little bit here and there, but I'm just not convinced, <laughs> especially in its current form. <laughs> and part of it is, you know, as we've seen, that, you know, it's just way too easy for bot armies to command these things and control these things, right? And so we need to take a serious issue at, you know, how can we make these so they can't be manipulated in this way? We all want to have genuine communication and be able to make decisions together and to use the amazing power that the internet brings to us, but it can't be controlled by troll bot armies and all this kind of stuff and in this way and scammers, you know, I mean, if you spend any time in the cryptocurrency space, it's just rife with scammers, especially, you know, when, when the markets are, you know, doing their thing that they did last year, which by the, by the way, it was like the fifth one of those that I've been through, so I'm chill. Um, so, 
So, you know, data and data ownership, uh, where data gets produced, and I mean, and also not wanting to lose sight of, wow, there's really amazing things that we can do with data now, right? Like the data that's being collected from the hardware devices and various things at this conference is amazing, yeah. right? And we want to utilize that to the best possible way. And so the Human Data Commons Foundation is, comes out of this. There's amazing ways that we can combine and use data. There's very destructive ways that data can be used. Uh, there's all sorts of privacy and ethical concerns. This is a, a very, um, you know, this is a burgeoning field, an active discussion that's happening now. I'm super thrilled to see it happening. You know, I've just heard, overheard, you know, so many conversations here about data and privacy and where is it stored and all this kind of stuff, which is just music to my ears. And, um, and so playing some sort of coordinating role in how that can happen so that we get the best possible results and eliminate the worst possible results is the purpose of the Human Data Commons Foundation. Oof, that feels so <laughs> good. I love it. I love it. The, there was a, a completely digital AI reporter in, that w was on the video. Yeah. It was China. Yeah, China. It yeah. Was just, saw that uh, one. Yeah, and yeah. <coughs> it's, <coughs> it's, it's, it's hilarious because they r it's released as a, you know, a digital reporter for now. Yeah. And then soon it'll be um, uh, Xi Jinping, right? Yeah, um, or uh, the president of China, or it'll be the um, uh, Donald Trump, or it'll be um, Elon Musk, or whatever. It'll just be leading figures, and so here's data being used in a way that is manipulative. Then there's you who's saying that let's pool together our efforts and resources and knowledge and find ways to put together the data in ways that are positive and bene benevolent and helpful and yep, yep. beneficial to humanity. And, and when I think about that, I think about how even if the good actors do their thing, there still needs to be some sort of a way for bad actors to not be able to do their thing. <laughs> not to do their thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a real challenge and no one's figured it out for sure. I mean, I think, there's, um, I think there are some interesting technological um, s solutions we should be looking at, but it, you know, that's only part of it. Only part of it is, you know, can we bring the engineering mindset to? I think uh, homomorphic encryption is a very interesting possibility for, you know, storing data much more safely and yet still allowing us to draw the inferences out of it that we can use for machine learning and statistical analysis. That's that's one. Um, you know, uh, Apple's you know a leader in um, differential privacy, which is sort of another statistical approach to how you might be able to you know, use the insights that you can get out of large amounts of data while still protecting the privacy of the individual. That's another. Blockchain, I think, is interesting as well, and I'm, you know, fairly knowledgeable in that area, and, and um, have, I'm actually a venture capitalist in several firms that are doing interesting stuff, like Ocean Protocol, I don't know if you're familiar with that one, or Holochain is an interesting approach as well. Um, there, but that's that's not the whole of it, I don't think. I don't think, you know, I think it's got to work hand in hand with um, with a process that is much more inclusive. Because all of those, if we just go back to the integral model, all of those reside in the lower right as technologies. Whereas integral theory says you get the most complete picture and you get the best basis for what we may call the right decision is if you examine it from all four quadrants. Yes. That's what we need to do. Okay. And so, you know, the real, the real um, piece that, you know, Human Data Commons is doing and it's sort of my personal passion is to, is what we call uh, int integral praxis. How can we get those um, people who are collecting data, working data, making decisions around data, um, to 
um, use a process that's much more inclusive, much more holistic to make the decisions about that, that has to happen. Talk about the report card now, if you want. Let's do it. Let's do <laughs> yeah. It. So, so one of the one of the. Um, it's a good segue. Really yeah. Good segue. One of one of the artifacts and one of, one of um, one of the ways that we approach this is to we produce a, an annual report card on the quantified self industry. So we go through sort of the, the top players. Last year, I think there was fifty in our report. So we just you know we. You know, look, go from everyone from Google and their Google Health and, um, you know, Garmin and Strava and, you know, some, some of the big names, um, Fitbit and, and so on and so forth, down to many smaller players as well. Um, and of course, the, this field is growing, so there's more stuff all the time. Uh, some of the ones that I see at the conference here are in our report, were in our report last year and are also in our report this year. Uh, last year was a very, um, it was our first one, and it was a very subjective report. So we really looked at it from the perspective of somebody coming, wanting to uh, use the service, and what their experience would be with understanding the privacy policy, understanding how the data was being used, um, and what they were getting in return for that data. And this year we've brought a much more of a, of a quantified approach to it in that we, we brought in a, um, a uh, statistician to help us you know sort of ramp up the, the quantified side of, of it so it's, it's much more uh, balanced and nuanced and then we'll, let, let's talk about what some of the like, questions are on the yeah the so I mean the main questions are um, uh, what uh, what rights do you give up when you use this service or use this hardware and the, the data that's being collected from it um, what control do you have over um, the data that's in there? Um, is uh, is it respecting of your privacy, or you know, does the data just disappear and you have no idea what happens to it or how it's being used? Is that is it how it's being used and stored and all that kind of stuff being told to you in clear language that you can understand? Um, and Not the, 66 pages of yeah, terms and conditions. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we, we're rating all of these uh, companies on exactly all, all of these things. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, which is kind of near and dear to my heart in terms of the project that we just mentioned, which is the ability to aggregate this data and draw, you know, insights from, from you know, combining it with other data sources is, is that a, a feature or a function that the, the site or service allows you to do? Can you export your data out of there? Or can you say, hey, Garmin, share my data in real time with these other services, or even like provide me with my own API to, to query that data myself, because I want to build something uh, on it. So. So they get a they get an overall score for how they rate on on all of those those things. Yeah, because yeah, I mean for obvious reasons. I mean you know for the directions that we want to go with with this data and for and also a big part of the of the report card is to show who's doing the best, show who's doing the worst, show where you are in that. And I you know the hope is people look and go. Wow, Clue, which is a European—I don't know if you're familiar with Clue. It's a—it's 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 a, a device for women, actually, and produced by women, and it has by far the the best score. In part, I think because, quite frankly, I think it's a—it's a female-run run run yeah. <laughs> company, and that it's European as well. European. Is like seems to be the killer combination in terms of, you know, doing yeah. all the right things in all the right way. Um, you you mentioned this. Uh, earlier, I want to know m more about Clue. I was just, I was just thinking about how ridiculous it is that we can't query our own data and be, yeah, yeah and be. <laughs> I like, I want to make things with my data. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and I mean, this is the kind of Who the, ranks the, the worst. <laughs> Who ranks the worst? On uh, it's a the, it's the, the a the you know program. Chinese advertising thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which produces a wearable, right? And so, yeah. Why do why do the companies <laughs> fill out what, like what's their incentive to fill out the quantified self? Oh, they don't fill it out. 
Oh no, we go and research oh, it. Who, oh yeah, 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 that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that makes <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. And the the only thing we want from the companies, quite frankly, is you know if there's a company that wants to be included, we would love to know about them, right? So there's a, probably a bunch here that are not in our report card, we weren't aware of totally. them. Also, I mean, we actually have fewer um, companies that we examined this year because of GDPR. What we found is, during our research period, we were you know, doing our research, you know, collating the data and stuff, and then when we went back for a second pass through to just verify, because that's part of our, our methodology, right, is to have two, two sets of eyes on it and stuff, lo and behold, a bunch of stuff had changed. Well, it was GDPR, right? There was a whole rush of, you know, changes that needed to be made in policies and all that kind of stuff as a response to, to GDPR. So it'll be what, interesting to see oh, what, what the results look like next year actually too because I, I Where can we find the what if I saw? Oh, it's it's all available for download, no nothing required. Uh, humandatacommons.org. Commons. You'll see it right on the on the front page Beautiful. there. Yeah. Um links in the bio, go check out humandatacommons.org and go check out the quantified self. Uh, report card. It's brilliant. I love it. I wanna. I wanna. Um, if it's okay, I'll just drop two more things that were. Yeah, we're and I want to, and then I want to know your long, <laughs> your long term vision of mm, the, mm -hmm. of the da of data and yeah. um, and yeah. what, what would be ideal because it sounded like that um, the highest scores on the report cards might be ideal. So yeah, um, yeah. We haven't mentioned the conference, right? Is that what you're gonna? Do too? No, okay. there's actually sort of two other. Okay. Go well, we can, we can talk about the conference a little bit if if you want, but um, but, but you can, you know, to get a good conference sense of the happens conference happens in Vancouver. Uh, happens in Vancouver. Um, we've held it in August last year, but this year we're actually moving it to the spring so that it actually doesn't um, conflict with the research period on the report card as well, because we are a small staff, and yeah. so it was kind of doubling up. But they were yeah. Both came out at the same time. We want the report card to continue to come out in the fall because then. Our sort of our social media campaign or our our PR campaign around it is to try and make it part of purchasing decisions for Christmas presents. Right. Fantastic idea. Right. Because yeah. you know applying that kind of pressure. Pressure. Yeah. And, you, and I mean, you vote with your and money. And it's not just it's not just you know beating with a stick. It's like hey, this is fantastic. You should you're considering this buy this product instead of this other product because it's yeah. you know more respecting uh, of, of you. It's so interesting that the, that if we can eventually have a a star rating system. Or That's a, or what I was going to talk about next. Letter <laughs> rating system. Great minds think I love that. That's exactly. So that's that's something that's been sort of back in my mind for a while is, and I mean the the model that I I think comes closest is the LEEDS system for buildings, for building sustainability. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a voluntary system. You know, it's well understood. It's not super complicated. You know, you're looking at buying a place or leasing an office, lead gold. Well, it's easy to look up and see what that means. And and you know, and it's consequently, because it's not something, at least in most jurisdictions, that's legislated, it really has been a, hey, you know, do this because it's the right thing to do. Right? And so, I mean, at least in Vancouver now, all the buildings these days have are are saying what their lead certification is, right? And the you know the top top leads are the ones that people want, right? Because they want to be identified with that. So we're looking at implementing, uh, you know, with that sort of voluntary notion, right? And making it a standard, which is like a community standard rather than you know just some imposed from above kind of thing. And, yeah. and you know, and, I like and the community uh, kind of like crowdsourced. Yeah. 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 And, yeah and for sure. Decentralized as much as possible. Totally. Distributed. Yeah. 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 Interesting. And then what was the other one? So the other one, which is, is uh, which I can't speak with great authority of because it's actually not my idea. It's actually the idea of Rochelle Fairfield, who's our executive director. Um, and so you should have her on the show when she's in the You bed. should have her on the show. Yeah, yeah. that would be great. Um, to talk about this idea in particular. Um, mm -hmm. So so you know, data is is the basis for machine learning, yeah. right? And that's in part why there's such a rush to get our hands on as much of it as possible, right? And machine learning and, you know, the possibilities of AI and how AI gets used. Um, 
um, and sort of examining some of the existential risks around where this might be going. And Elon Musk is, you know, really, really big into this as well. Um, and it's quite controversial, but you know, we we think that there are going to be some big problems that come out of AI. And and to some extent, we're seeing some of the smaller ones. I don't know if you saw the the um, the Amazon thing uh, about a month ago, where oh. Amazon had created this this machine learning AI thing to scour the web looking for candidates to approach to, about hiring. And so they least you know release the AI, go get us candidates, and it comes back and somebody you know I don't know how long they've been running it. They've been running it for a while actually, and you know so it was part of their hiring process, right? Like this, it's the lead gen, it's doing all this stuff. Lo and behold, somebody does an analysis. Well, things completely biased against women. Like there's you know all other things being equal, it's it's. So they've got, you know, was that, was it's that, basically a sexist AI that they were using was that, it, to hire Well, people. what kind of a position were they looking for? Were they looking for, you know, that's the I mean, there's, you can, there's a lot of other variables. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of other variables. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, ostensibly, you know, when it was revealed uh, that this was what was going on, they actually, their, to their credit, their um, response was verify those results and were like, oh, this is right, and they pulled it, so it's it's out of their process. So I mean, that's just like a mi not not a completely minor example, but it's yeah. an example of um, of you know an AI that's been developed based upon data and set off to do its thing, causing a problem, right? I mean, you know, it's yeah. it's um, it's increasing the 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 economic disenfranchisement of women exactly. to some yeah. extent, right? Yeah. And or this is Amazon, or yeah. if we're just minority <laughs> groups around the world, yeah, or who knows? You know, you there's the lots of other Rohingya examples of genocide in yeah. Myanmar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And example. You know, so, and I mean, there's a there's a really important um, um, sort of study or book on this by a woman by the name of, of uh, is it Kathy McNeil? I think Kathy McNeil called Weapons of Math Destruction. Mm -hmm. So she is another uh, sort of statistician uh, um, who's gone through and collected lots of examples of these things, these algorithms, which come out of machine learning and you know, based upon data that are doing, um, you know, leading to unjust policies and unjust, unjust procedures. So, you know, to some extent, you know, now's the time to be tackling this. Now's the time to be talking about this. Now's the time to be coming up with a more complete um, way of um, building these things. And that's what, again, what I think integral praxis really uh, brings into these kinds of things. And it's also knowing thyself. Knowing thyself, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll I think yeah. maybe we can wrap with you. You all know Harari and his, his, yeah. his, uh, you know, his, his uh, claim that we, you know, we need to know ourselves better. That's the only way that we're going to be able to yeah. resist the manipulation that's, you know, yes. coming at us now and is just going to get even better and better and better because yeah. of all of the data and, and everything being collected and understood. N knowing ourselves both on an individual basis and also knowing the forces that may be attempting to manipulate us and yeah. also knowing the, as best as we can, making communal sense making. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And with that then having some sort of a layer of a foundation that we can move forward with uh, as we attempt to be stewards of this earth. Yeah, and, yeah. 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 So, the, so the final idea, just so I can wrap up, um, do the wrap. Uh, this is a um, uh, what we're tentatively calling an AI cleanup fund. And so, ha! <laughs> it's perfect. Ocean cleanup, <laughs> AI cleanup. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how familiar you are with um, the U.S. Superfund program. Right. Superfund program. Yeah. So Superfund. I mean, so during during the Industrial Revolution, mm -hmm. you know, there was uh, all of these like industrial sites set up all over America, right? Like chemical plants and da 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 da. And then those companies went out of business, but they left just this oh, yeah. massive That's right. problem, right? Yeah. And so the government's response to this, and I think it was probably Jimmy Carter, mm -hmm. I would guess, because mm -hmm. I don't know who else it would have been. <laughs> Not that there weren't other fine presidents uh -huh. too, but yeah. 
um, was the creation of, and who knows, maybe it was Reagan, um, <laughs> the creation of what they called Superfund. And so it was yeah. this massive pile of money. To clean up. To clean up these things yeah. where you couldn't, you know, there was nobody left to, to See, hold See, that's an easier thing to clean up because it's as though the bad actors aren't yeah. going to come and open those up again. Yeah. Yeah. But with an AI yeah. super fund, you may have bad actors just... Totally. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of things that work out. And I mean, we, in part, you know, this is, this is, my, this is my PR background lighting up here. Because what I like about even the idea of an AI cleanup fund is the effect it has on people just when they hear, oh, there's an AI cleanup fund? What does that mean? That means there's going to be a mess from AI, very likely, that needs to be cleaned up. So it's already having like a interesting a the nomenclature gets just drilled the nomenclature into the itself. psychology. Exactly, exactly. I like that. That's a big point. AI cleanup fund, and then people are like, "Oh, it's oh, going to be a, it's a oh, it's more notion that it's a problem in many ways." I like that. Yeah, or it could be a problem, or we should at least have some insurance for things that may come out of it, which are the yeah. unintended consequences of. Yes. Of what we've done. What is your long-term view on data? I like to think of a world where the data is all completely transparent and it's um, all completely to be able to use in whatever way possible. That there's, even if your metatranscriptomics and yours and Paula's and et cetera mm -hmm. are all available, um, then I don't think that it is um, it could potentially make it easier for us to just have data as an as an open yeah um, thing. I mean the issue I think is there are going to be and you've all know Harry you know calls them he's like there's corporations and governments that want to manipulate you and you know the more data they have the easier it is to manipulate you well there's also a level of leveling up in consciousness that occurs that those companies hopefully buy millennials and Gen Zers and even younger people that are coming in that say that we will not be a part of what you're yep. doing. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that's what happens because yep. then yep. Um, then they die for for not uh, changing for not. Yeah. Really yeah. And I mean change. I think what we're seeing with Facebook right now is really interesting. Yeah, I'm I agree. sure you probably saw the stat like 44 percent of like what is it 18 to 29 year olds have deleted the app off their phone in the last year. It's like Really, forty-four mm -hmm. percent mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, in America. Mm -hmm. in America yeah, yeah. But I mean, if that's true, yeah. that's I mean, they've got to be yeah. freaking out at Facebook, well, Facebook headquarters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the, 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 they have a lot of other interesting trains that are going, like with virtual reality, and yeah, um, yeah. There, there's a lot of other things that are going on there. That, but I, but I agree with you. I think, yeah. Um, so that I think I think we're I think that that was. That was super duper deep across um, not only uh, human data commons, but also just the, just the sheer like playfulness of us being able to talk about about mm. leveling up and about all the nuance there. That was just really good to be able to sit down with you, Scott. That was yeah, that was, that yeah, was fantastic. Like that was top notch. <laughs> that was super fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I I should say you know the other the other thing. You know, in terms of the the notion of leveling up, I am somewhat sympathetic to um, one of the people that I work with in this area. I mean, I don't work with him directly, but you know, he is a figure, and you know, he's quite concerned about the notion of leveling up because he feels that. To even hold that notion, to carry that notion, is a form of violence. It is in some <laughs> ways. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. It is. So yeah. you know, that's uh, and I haven't. I mean, I just bring that up because I, th I think it's. I that think it, it has to be part of the discussion as well. So I mean, so could seeing things as a hierarchy could be viewed yeah. as like a violent. Yeah, for way. sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I mean, at least the, I mean the integral model. I mean it. It. Um, it acknowledges hierarchies exist and says they make perfect sense in cer certain circumstances, right? And certain conditions, right? Which yeah. I think it's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's appropriate. And it's, I yeah. think that's ultimately the same way for, uh, you can apply similar thinking around 
data and how it gets used and how much control we're going to give, um, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and thank you for being this has been super part of fun. such a vibrant discussion. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> likewise. This has been super fun. And where are you fun. based? Are you here? Uh, downtown San Francisco okay. is where the okay. recording studio is. Okay. Um, yeah, and, y and you are up, In Vancouver. up yeah, north. Canada. Um, yeah, when when uh, sm when your smart people come down here, we'll feature them. When we go up there, we'll yeah. feature your. Do you smart, come to Vancouver? Yeah. Um, well, we'll get you to Partech next year. <laughs> yeah, I would love. I would love that. Yeah, I would love that. Great. We could do some great interviews, and yep. that would be a lot of fun. Um, in the spring coming up, then so yeah. it's coming yep. up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll so connect you with Rochelle, our, awesome. our RED. The report card is coming up, right? Then it's the report card is was released was last Friday. So it's, it's available for download. Report cards were released last Friday. Fantastic. Yep. Definitely go check it out. Links in the bio, everyone. Thanks for yep. tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. Give us, a, give us your thoughts in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Also, um, definitely go and build, build, build. Go create, go manifest your dreams. Build the future. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Much love, and we will see you soon. Peace.